Hi everybody. So in this video, I will be explaining my eel pit. So first things first, every time I film a video, I shut the filter off just so you can actually hear me. But yeah, this here is the only filtration I run. It's uh, 20 gallon long just with some ceramic rings in it. And then this small canister filter. Uh, for all the fish, that has kept it totally fine because the real secret of the eel pit is that it still actually is hooked up to the gutters on my roof. So right here, uh, rain actually still comes in every time it rains. And then with this black hose, I just pump it right back out as it fills up. So with that, it actually keeps the uh, water parameters pretty much zeros across the board. Uh, nitrates, ammonia, nitrite. Yeah, even nitrates. So the end of the cycle, there's uh, pretty much zero buildup of waste in here. And every once in a while, I can go through and kick up the gravel for any solid particles. But that's why I did the big gravel, is uh, everything would just settle underneath it and it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, I'll explain why I don't have any sand or plants at the end of this video. But here I will go through the stocking. So newest additions, stars of the show right now, are these two diamond sturgeon given to me by my buddy uh, Chase Fish King on all social medias. Um, we also have five blue crabs, Rangoon, Creeb, uh, then we also have spotted gar. I went and caught these three spotted gar myself. Um, this is actually, that bigger one is Jason, and then that smaller one is uh, actually a small alligator gar called Garth Brooks. Then over there is Garados and Garchomp. I'm hoping the spotted gar we can get set up to breed them later this year. Um, all the eels and catfish are currently under that chair. Um, they pretty much just live in this back island, and the gar pretty much always stay kind of hovered around back here. I think once it warms up, they'll be out and about more. But yeah, for now, they hide pretty good. Um, I still have about 20 dojo loaches. Those guys, whoa, went quicker than I expected. But yeah, there's one of the dojo loaches there. You can see they just don't really react to anything, so I think they're getting picked off pretty easily. Um, then I also do still have some Chinese trapdoor snails. The crabs are eating some of them, but some of them are doing totally fine. I do have a little bit of an algae problem right now, but they're going to town on it. I'll probably add another 10 to 30 snails here soon enough. But yes, this is a rainwater cistern. Uh, they were pretty common in older houses. Uh, every house on my street actually has one. Uh, this house was built in 1958, and this has held water since then. No signs of leakage, no signs of foundation damage. Uh, it's meant to hold water. Also no mold because of this, it's clean water. It actually, the total dissolved solids down here checks out cleaner than my tap water. So the fish are doing totally fine. The uh, algae came about when I did the longer day cycle, kind of spring into summer, the days get longer. So kind of the pits acclimating to that. So yeah, overall the pit is actually super easy to maintain just because it does naturally still fill with rainwater. Uh, there isn't much I have to do. I clean out that filter occasionally, but besides that, it pretty much just runs itself. So now let's start with the most common questions I get. What happens when all these fish outgrow the pit? Uh, so this here is one of the spotted gar. This is an absolutely full-grown female spotted gar, Jason. Uh, she's about 30 inches, and as you can see here, plenty of space for Jason here and the other three spotted gar. Now this next one, Garth Brooks, is an alligator gar. To my knowledge, the largest alligator gar that's grown up in captivity is about five foot. So five foot's gonna be big in here, but it won't be insanely big. He just wants to go, go back into hiding. But there goes Jason. Um, I think I could pretty comfortably house a five foot fish in here. And that's about what the sturgeon should max out in captivity to. Uh, the average captive of diamond sturgeon is about four or five foot. Uh, in the wild, seven foot is possible, but also um, alligator gar in the wild can hit about ten foot. But like I said, I don't know anyone that's got an alligator gar that was raised in captivity over five foot. A lot of these are super long lived too. Like if the sturgeon hit five foot in five years, absolutely, I'll rehome them. I've got buddies with ponds. That won't be an issue at all if they are begging me for the sturgeon already. So that will not be an issue at all. Uh, same with the alligator gar. If it suddenly jumps up to 
six foot overnight, I will rehome them. But uh, it's just not likely that they'll, honestly, I don't know if they'll hit five foot in the next 10 years, either of them. Uh, if they do, that can definitely be arranged to get them out of here. Like I said, I've got buddies with ponds. If I made a post saying I've got to rehome these fish tomorrow, I bet I could find some of the best homes in the country for them. Also, this is the current swimming area. In the next year, I probably will raise the depth another six inches and put all the cinder blocks up against the wall just so the fish have the maximum amount of swimming space. Uh, the gars and stuff love the structure though. They always hide in this back, back little portion. But yeah, I can increase the size of it and I will definitely be increasing the depth. Uh, by the time these fish are probably three to four foot, I would have about probably three foot of water. And they're at 16 inches right now, which is plenty for now. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, from the surface, the water's so clear it looks pretty shallow, but from the uh, underwater perspective, it's pretty cool. All right, on to the next topic. Sand. Why don't the eels have sand? Isn't it bad for their bellies to be on rough gravel? Uh, not really. That's pretty common aquarium advice for more delicate aquarium species. These are American eels. They thrive in every habitat in North America, Eastern North America, uh, Florida to Canada. They do absolutely fine on rocks, on sand, on gravel, on mud. Uh, if they had the option, I bet they would swim through broken glass, no problem at all. Uh, I've had the eels in here probably eight months now, and they have yet to be scratched by the gravel or the cinder blocks. But the real reason I don't do sand is, for one, every creek or stream I've been in North America has looked more like this than anything nice, sandy, and planted. Um, but the biggest thing is trapped gases under the sand. So in your aquarium, this same thing can happen, but gas pockets can form because the sand is so tightly packed together that uh, it can actually trap air pockets, which kind of turn foul, methane buildup, different things like that. Uh, in this confined space, something like that could probably kill me and everything in here. Um, it's just not worth the risk with the sand. Like I said, a lot of eastern North America, every creek, stream, and smaller river I've been in has pretty much been all rock-based. And that brings us to the next topic, plants. So I don't plan on adding any real plants. Honestly, I don't think the lighting is enough to keep anything alive, but also I get seasons down here. So it'll be near freezing in the winter. Uh, a bunch of rotting plant matter down here would be an absolute mess, but also another potential for harmful gases to build up. A lot of rotting plant matter would not be ideal. Honestly, a majority of these animals don't even utilize plants, like at all. Uh, the blue crabs would probably eat them. The eels might swim through them, but they're not gonna hang out in there. They wanna be more secure under a rock. Uh, the gar, that is one thing that does utilize plants, specifically when they spawn. They lay their eggs in plants, and with those spotted gar, I will be adding plants in the hope they breed. I'm not sure, and I doubt they do, but it'd be really cool if they do. So I will be adding fake plants to one area of the pit to, in an attempt to get them to spawn. Another issue I just recently learned about with the addition of the sturgeon is apparently sturgeon about this size pretty frequently can get tangled in aquatic plants and actually end up drowning. Uh, larger sturgeon can push through the plants, but it was saying anything under about 30 inches. Don't keep it with any kind of like pond weed or anything like that. They can get hung up in there. Um, but sturgeon aren't going through plants in the wild. None of these fish really are. 